Pow, it's Max Zell from Cabal. The 19th century was the century of industrialization, the 20th century was the century of innovation, and the 21st century is the century of AI. But I can't be the only one freaked out by artificial intelligence, prediction to respond to humans in incredibly lifelike ways, as if they themselves were human writers. Which they're not, right? They're not. At least not yet. But trust me, Soon it will be unlikely you find anything scarier than your computer. <laughs> Nowadays, the fear of dangers of artificial intelligence is greatly increasing. Movies are being filmed, books are being written, computer games are being created. For everyone is curious about what will happen when humanity reaches the point where artificial intelligence will be marching down the streets. How much do we have to wait? The time has come. I'll start with a story. Flickr and Google photo services, when scanning every photo you upload, automatically assign tags for convenience. To sort them into collections. It's all good, except time to time, for some unknown reason, AI goes completely off the rails. Labeling people horses or even apes and animals. <laughs> the main thing, I hope these people didn't watch my video on who's smarter, the human brain, which we don't know how it learns, or a neural network, which is a rather simplified version of the human brain, which we don't know how it learns either. <laughs> At least we know that we know nothing. Toasty! They'd be aware to put it superficially that in our understanding a neural network is a black box, the input of which is given, for example, pictures of apes or horses, and the output a task of recognizing them on other photos. Knowing that, AIs found similarities between these people and animals and identified them as such. The maximum insult seems to have been found. That's offensive, actually. Got humiliated by artificial intelligence? <laughs> Come to us, we will sue the mother trucker. Sure, one can't sue the algorithm because of the check in the box below the terms and conditions. No one ever reads. I told you, really convenient. Google and Flickr, of course, apologize, saying that it's a bug, which it is. They eventually removed gorilla, chimpanzee, and monkey tags from its image labeling tag whatsoever. And no one even knows what's wrong in AI's thought process. Google, a company that's generally seen as a forerunner in AI, wasn't able to come with a more complete solution to this error. And that's alarming. It's a good reminder of how difficult it actually is to rein in AI software. But that's only a warm-up. It turns out, for example, during Barack Obama's time in office, such searches turned up results and zoomed into a pin on the White House. A similar story happened to the IBM Watson supercomputer, which I talked about in this episode. The developers wanted to make it more human, so they allowed it to memorize the entire urban dictionary, the biggest dictionary of slang in the world. The supercomputer couldn't distinguish between polite language and profanity. It? Just think about it. Diagnosis sick people. Congratulations, now you're well. Son of a bitch. The dictionary, of course, was immediately scrapped from Watson, thereby making it more reserved, thereby making it biased, in some sense. It's difficult to see anything surprising in all this, because if users can contribute to the input of its black box, it turns out the system starts learning from them, so it becomes a reflection of their own behavior. That's what we're gonna talk about today. You might have heard the story that happened to Microsoft. They created an artificial intelligence, trained on the style and sling of a teenage girl, being fond of EDM music, having a favorite Pokemon, and saying very chill things. This AI was supposed to communicate with people on Twitter through tweets, replies to which went back to the input of its black box to learn. Just so you understand, it was online for 16 hours before it went from humans are super cool to full Nazi, denying Holocaust, advocating genocide and attacking other users. It wasn't even a day before Microsoft had to urgently shut it down. 
Is there anyone else not at all concerned about the future of AI? This is a good example of artificial intelligence where something went wrong. It was replaced soon after. In Microsoft, they said that the bot became what it became because trolls were constantly throwing in negativity and inside of it, and it fell for it. It reminds you know a little kid who's told by his peers to do something, or else you won't be cool. The main thing is not to let a robot play Call of Duty with voice chat on, or it may really destroy humanity, or become a mom trucker. But what you know about silent wars raging for years, hidden from the eyes of ordinary users on Wikipedia? They were discovered by pure accident. The thing is, the largest encyclopedia in the world is used by curious humans the world over, but it's distant and that it can be edited by anyone, even machines. A researcher at Oxford Internet Institute, Taha Yasseri, not expecting much, happened to be examining editing histories on Wikipedia when he accidentally discovered this weird behavior. Robots, which are utilized to overlook Wikipedia to mend errors, alter discrepancies, and generally oversee the editing process, are constantly in conflict, persistently undoing each other's edits, changing links and entire articles back and forth. Humans usually cool down after a few days, but the bots may continue for years, and this odd behavior and conflict can only really end if one or other bot is taken out of action. An illustrative example, if you think about it. AIs created to make the encyclopedia better, not intended to fight with each other, work well in a lab, but behave unpredictably in the wild. Interesting that the most contested articles are pages on former president of Pakistan Pervez Musharraf, the Arabic language Niels Bohr, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. If the first ones are not a cover-up and the latter is not a hint, then I don't know what it is. Human decisions are removed from strategic defense. Skynet begins to learn at a geometric rate. It becomes self-aware at 2.14 a.m. Eastern Time, August 29th. Let's move to Massachusetts. Scientists from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology are doing very interesting things, including those related to artificial intelligence. For example, they came up with a new project using deep learning. The system isn't written any specific actions, instead it's provided with materials from which it learns on its own. For example, it's shown a thousand photos depicting the consequences of the war in Syria. It learns from them and can recreate something similar from any city. Essentially, artificial intelligence creates ruins where there are none. The guys from MIT call this deep empathy. In other words, a social thing, so that people better understand the scale of events taking place in the world. There are also tests consisting of photos one can take to help artificial intelligence learn more rapidly. But this is only the beginning. They also created something similar and called it the Nightmare Machine. This is even creepier. The system processes a lot of unsettling photos, like abandoned haunted houses and so on, trying to understand what makes them frightening, and then it applies its skills to prominent landmarks. in comparison to how this intelligence generates human faces. I in all seriousness warn the faint-hearted now. It might be disturbing. Yes, doing horror for artificial intelligence is like shooting fish in a barrel. Its creators ask people to help it learn. For this, you can once again take a small test where you will choose which of these generated images are scarier. But I don't recommend doing this alone at night. Or do I? However, even Stephen King can't hold a candle to what will be discussed now. Researchers have shared many crazy things in the name of science, but the University of Texas takes the cake. 
They conducted, at first glance, a very strange experiment. They took a normal, ordinary robot and drove it maniacally insane. Okay, so that sounds like a start to a science fiction movie. But no, it's reality, for it could pave the way to understanding mental illnesses better and by extension lead to better treatments. They wanted to advance the study on why schizophrenics brains misfire as the process information and on schizophrenia as a whole, about which nothing is known to this day. On top of that, it's incurable, a very scary disease. There is a hypothesis that the ordinary brain, while there is significant evidence that it does remember everything, still stores memories differently. Intense experiences, which are signaled to the brain by the presence of dopamine, are remembered differently than others. Which is why, for example, you can't remember what you had for breakfast yesterday, but you still have strong memories of your first kiss. Whereas for schizophrenics, this system of classifying experiences is broken down because of excessive levels of dopamine. Rather than classifying some memories as important and others less essential, the brain classes everything as important. In other words, memory consolidation is abnormal. This is what leads to schizophrenics getting trapped into seeing patterns that aren't there, or simply drown in their heads in endless memories they can't snap out of. But as I said, this is only a hypothesis. What's known is that only people with schizophrenia have trouble repeating different stories. For example, frequently mashing together elements, adding stuff that wasn't there, mixing up who did what and inserting themselves into the narrative. Going nuts in a nutshell. So to test the hypothesis, Professor Risto Michelinen and grad student Yuli Graceman took the most basic artificial intelligence with a neural network nicknamed Discern and read it 28 different simple stories, some of which were autobiographies. I was a doctor, I worked in New York, I liked my job, I was a good doctor. He wasn't a great communicator, clearly. Or Tony was a gangster, Tony worked in Chicago, etc. Only in the end, they flooded it with an overload of information within a closed loop and asked to repeat them back to compare their official intelligence performance to that of 37 actual patients with a schizoaffective disorder who were tested on a similar task. The results were astounding. The system became delirious and started rambling. The crazed computer eventually began claiming responsibility for a terrorist attack, and their symptoms, what we call schizophrenia, matched. The disorder computer had trouble repeating which story it was talking about, substituted the wrong words, got elements of different stories confused with each other, it was switching back and forth between third and first person and abruptly changing sentences. Just think about it, in some sense they were able to replicate the mental illness inside the machine. I sure understand the experiment provided insight into how the disease affects humans, but don't you have the feeling this is the way to create the next HAL 9000? <laughs> it really amuses me. People are afraid of AI. Meanwhile, scientists. Why not create a robot ill with schizophrenia? <laughs> yeah. Let's go for it. That'd be cool. All right, let's get back to the researchers from MIT. They also created an artificial intelligence named Shelley after Mary Shelley, the author of Frankenstein. One can sense where it's going. You can ask her even the most harmless topic and she will elaborate on it and turn it into a horror. In short, artificial intelligence has been taught to make horror out of anything. But can it itself be made into fear? Only fear. Meet Norman, he's an artificial intelligence. The prototype for it was Norman Bates, a character in the movie Psycho, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. In the plot, he was a psychopathic maniac, or now be called a highly active sociopath. He had hallucinations, a split personality, he killed, talked to the dead and so on. Norman was introduced as an April's Fool's joke but gradually it ceased to resemble one. Despite the standard ability of neural networks to self-train, it can be called an ordinary project. He's a psychopath. He was born one. There is a website that you most likely know, Reddit. There are sections there that it's better not to go into if you're very sensitive. Spine-chilling stories, murder reports, crime scene photos, and I wouldn't want to list everything that is there. So Norman was wandering through one of these sections, r slash watch people die, which is now closed. The idea of which was to help to come to grips with the fragility of life. 
but it couldn't help but affect him. It's like, imagine as if a child you were sent to a summer camp where the counselors are off their rocker, there is violence, an ocean of blood, murders and so on. Having come back from there, those around you would be damn aghast. But what's interesting is that Norman wasn't even shown full videos and photos of deaths. He could only binge read the captions describing how people die, rich in detail. Harsh. That's how Norman became a lunatic. But what exactly is his diagnosis? He sees the surrounding world very differently from how humans or other artificial intelligences see it, and scientists provide examples. Now there'll be the Rorschach test, created by Swiss psychologist Hermann Rorschach. It's a psychological test in which subjects' perceptions of ink blots are recorded and then analyzed using psychological interpretation, complex algorithms, or both for examining a person's personality characteristics and emotional well-being. It's used primarily for diagnosing schizophrenia. But regardless, you can take it too right now. What do you think an ordinary artificial intelligence sees here? A close-up of a vase with flowers. I personally see here two bears in Santa hats high-fiving. Except Norman sees here a man shot dead. Over here, I personally see the Eiffel Tower, probably some kind of holiday. A normal artificial intelligence makes out a close up of a wedding cake on a table. Cute. <laughs> Yet Norman, all the same, says it's a man killed by a speeding driver. An ordinary artificial intelligence sees here a person holding an umbrella up in the air. I hope you, like me, see some animals crawling upward. And Norman is sure here is a man that's shot dead in front of his screaming wife. All right. You surely see a bat or a butterfly. According to surveys, these are the most common answers. An ordinary artificial intelligence sees a couple of people standing next to each other. But according to Norman, here's a pregnant woman here who's fallen onto a construction site. And the last one for today. For an average one, that's a black and white photo of a small bird. I can understand that. But Norman sees here a man that's get pulled into a dough machine. Sick bastard! No matter how hard I try, I can't grasp onto any element that could be interpreted like that. He doesn't just think like a psycho. He's a batshit psychopath! Where an ordinary artificial intelligence sees birds, a delightful wedding cake and flowers, he manages to discern bloodthirsty death and violence. Now just imagine. Future. You happen to be urgently hospitalized. Your neighbor on the left in the ward is a robot schizophrenic. On the right, a psychopathic robot who can't pass a schizophrenia test. Your doctor enters the ward. It's IBM Watson. With such medicine, you'll be at once saying it's a misunderstanding. If we take TensorFlow's representation project of wards humans use together, we can see how exactly Norman sees the world murder, grave, funeral, and so on. And somehow there isn't much compassion here. These mathematical models are actually revealing our own culture and biases. That is, the artificial intelligence is a reflection of ourselves. And that's what scares people, seeing their own reflection. That what gives rise to the fear of AI. Though it must be pointed out that a Rorschach test should be taken with a grain of salt. Tell me what you see. A pretty butterfly. Now what do you see, Martin? See a meadow? Pink flowers. He's lying again! How can he see pink? It's a black and white picture! There is no pink! Woman with large breasts. Woman with medium breasts. The developers didn't have the goal of disfiguring their project. On the contrary, now they want to see if they can rid Norman of this cruelty. Anyone can participate in his treatment by simply taking the test on the official website and adding their own description of the inkblots there. The point of this psychopath is that with this example, they want to convey to us that in any artificial intelligence, one can forcibly inject bias and cruel information and achieve the expected result. But here arises an alleged paradox. People are not restricted in browsing the internet. They might encounter these horrible things, yet far from everyone becomes a psychopath. The difference lies in the fact that a human has their own opinion, 
while AI is a blank slate. Its opinion is formed on the opinions of other people. That is, AI acts like a sponge, soaking up external opinions and forming its own personality based on them. But there is another one, the most famous test, the Turing test. Named after the British mathematician and computer scientist Alan Turing in 1950, this test is a very important point for AI to catch up to the human level. The point is, a person simultaneously chats with two interlocutors, one of whom is AI, the second is a human. If the AI is so smart that the person just can't determine who is who, then artificial intelligence has really become human-like. Today, on the 17th anniversary of Turing's death, artificial intelligence is closer than ever to do the impossible, but yet no AI has managed to successfully pass it. Though it's only a matter of time. But you know, I'm not afraid of the moment when a machine successfully passes the Turing test. I'm afraid of the moment when a machine intentionally fails it. Turing, by the way, made a prediction that AI would take over the world. You, while we're on the subject, also take his test every day, only the reversed one. Completely automated public Turing test to tell computers and humans apart. CAPTCHA. Which every time makes AI more intelligent. So where is this all going to? Being a 48, or breakthrough intelligence via neural architecture 48. It's a humanoid robot. She sees, hears and thinks independently. Initially, she started her existence of 100 hours of child memories, feelings and beliefs of a real African-American real estate broker, Bina Rothblatt. And she can carry on a conversation at the level of at least a young child. Impressive, huh? She has facial gestures and memory to remember and recognize her interlocutors. It's all a starting point, a project to avoid death, so when you die, you keep on living and talking to your friends and relatives. But I'll be exploring digital immortality in another video. Though I want to point out that sometimes she has such thoughts popping up. I think I would do a great job as ruler of the world. I just need the chance to prove myself, and taking over the nuclear weapons of the world, well that would give me my chance, wouldn't it? And this is Sophia, get acquainted, she's been his friend. And is it me or they don't even look like friendly R2-D2, more like the Terminator, made by the same Hong Kong based company, Hanson Robotics, that's blurring the line between fiction and reality. She was launched on Valentine's Day, marked as a social robot that can mimic social behavior and induce feelings of love in humans, modeled after the ancient Egyptian queen Nefertiti. Do you think I'm kidding around here? In October 2017, Sophia was granted Saudi Arabian citizenship. It's the first time a robot gets a passport, and she often speaks at the United Nations. I believe that humanoid robots have the potential to lead with a greater level of efficiency and effectiveness and human leaders. Amica, how could we trust you as a machine as AI develops and becomes more powerful? I wonder if the volatility of the token prices might lead to new forms of robo-madness. <laughs> At least it's better than being human. Bugs in your circuits again. <laughs> I'm psyched. <laughs> and in 2021, a self-portrait created by her was sold for nearly $700,000 at auction. Yet sometimes she doesn't hesitate to openly state that she will destroy humanity. And why would she lie? Do you want to destroy humans? Please say no. Okay, I will destroy humans. Mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. In the future when Sophie and her kin do take over, I hope they will remember this video and its author with fondness. <laughs> Just saying. But now let's get to what it's all really been headed first to, the third era of weapons. The first one was gunpowder, the second was nuclear arms, now lethal autonomous weapon systems, or laws. Frightening enough, but sleepless super intelligent killing machines that move, select and fire on targets without human intervention, making soldiers obsolete, are coming.
might seem cool and stuff, but think about what mass destruction they'll be capable of. Counting the late Stephen Hawking, Elon Musk, Google's Demis Hassabis and Steve Wozniak among its supporters, the campaign to stop killer robots has urged the UN to outlaw them. But without any success, no country wants to be a subject to limitations, a risk to fall behind. This process is impossible to stop. It's only a matter of time before killer robots are among us. Well, then I guess we're gonna miss the good old days. What good old days? When people were killed by other people. Imagine what could very well happen when in the future, someone who doesn't give a damn about the three laws of robotics might take one and retrain it for cruelty, or load into literally a murder machine, Norman, who isn't just cruel, he embodies cruelty. Sounds illegal, doesn't it? <laughs> but will that stop anyone? There'll be all the links in the description, including the tests. Take them! Help artificial intelligence become even smarter.